the cold night of sin I did roam. When Jesus, the kind shepherd, found me, and now I am on my way home. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. He restoreth my soul when I'm weary. He giveth me strength day by day. He leads me beside the still waters. He guards me each step of the way. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. When I walk through the dark, lonesome valley, my Savior will walk with me there. His great hand will lead me to the mansions He's gone to prepare. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, and I shall feast at the table spread for me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Song number 80 now, song number 80, day by day and with each passing moment, good words to this song, let's sing out now, sing from our heart this morning. Day by day and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here, trusting in my Father's wise bestowment. I've no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure gives unto each day what he deems best. Lovingly, it's part of pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. Himself is near me with a special mercy for each hour. All my cares he pain would bear and cheer me. He whose name is counselor and power, the protection of his child and treasure is a charge. That on himself he laid. As thy days, thy strength shall be in measure. This the pledge to me he made. Help me then in every tribulation. So to trust 
Thy promises, O Lord, that I lose not faith, sweet consolation, offer me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble me, ere to take as from a father's hand, one by one the days the moments fleeting, till I reach the promised land. Good singing this morning. I'd like to ask Brother Buck Roberts if you would ask God's blessing on the service. Father heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, again for being in the house. Thank you, dear Lord, for the work of singing this morning. And we just thank you for all you do for us. Yes. And then we remember the prayer list. As we ask you to do it, as we ask you to do it, Brother Bright, today in order to pray mm -hmm. and you. Uh, yes. Yes, the Lord, just give the words to say and talk to you and you. And they'll know you say, the Lord, that they'll turn to you this way. Yes. We ask that you just bless them and let you say, you know. Amen. You may be seated. Good Sunday morning and glad to uh, have you here in the Lord's house this morning and want to make sure we get everyone welcomed properly. If you're here for the very first time and uh, have not already received a, uh, a visitor's uh, card or uh, a brochure about uh, about the church uh, this morning. If you haven't already received that, would you raise your hand so we can get that to you? Anyone that needs a uh, a uh, visitor's card and a brochure, anyone that needs one of those, okay? Good deal. And anyone else that needs a bulletin? Anyone need a bulletin? Would you raise your hand? We'll get those to you. There. Very good. Great. All right. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. You may be seated. Well, we had a great time at, at uh, junior camp last week, and what a blessing. We had uh, 22 uh, young people trust Christ as their Savior. At uh, at least that is, Brother Joe. That was the last number you heard, right? 22 trust Christ as their Savior, and uh, and uh, had four uh, of those uh, juniors that trusted Christ for them from from uh, our own church. Amen. So we are so thankful that uh, the Lord answered prayer. Uh, you know that's what we wanted is for you all to be involved in praying for them, and uh, we could tell. We could tell that folks back in, in the churches that sent children, uh, sent juniors to camp this week, we could tell that somebody was praying and asking God to, uh, to keep people safe. Uh, we didn't have any kind of uh, accidents or anything like that that I'm aware of. Uh, and also that the Lord would work in the hearts of all of us, campers and counselors alike, would work in our hearts and uh, that we would be uh, challenged and uh, even changed spiritually as a result of the, of the preaching. And Brother Decker did a great job this week uh, preaching about uh, God's service station. And uh, uh, I enjoyed that very much and uh, I always enjoy Brother Joe's illustrated messages. He'll, he'll dress up like uh, that particular character or that goes along with that theme for uh, for the week and uh, that was uh, a blessing again uh, this year so thank you for praying thank you for caring uh, and thank you for giving uh, I I am thankful that uh, uh, we had scholarships for uh, everyone that needed it and that was a result of your uh, sacrificial giving for, uh, for them to attend. So thank you so much for uh, being a part of camp uh, in that way. And so that was junior camp. A week from tomorrow, we head off to senior camp. So uh, I ask you once again, be in prayer for the speakers 
And uh, Brother, uh, Brother Jason will be our main speaker. He'll be preaching twice a day uh, to all of us. And then, of course, we'll have devotion times and, and, uh, and quiet times where we have our personal devotions as well through, uh, through the week. And once again, pray that God will use his word to change and convict and conform lives to, uh, to be more like Christ as a result of, uh, of camp. <clears throat> and you say, Brother Brian, what's the difference in the two camps? Well, the ones going in a week from tomorrow are older. That's about it. That's about it. Because uh, every one of us, no matter what our age is, needs God's Word, don't we? Amen. And so that, that part doesn't change. God's Word going to be at both camps. Uh, the age is only a little different. Uh, you say, well, why didn't they go to junior camp? Because it wasn't senior camp. It, there is a little difference. We don't have that much time to tell all the differences, but uh, each one of them needs your prayer. So pray for them. Pray for safety once again. Pray for God's word to do a work once again. And uh, we look forward to what God is going to do uh, in the lives of all those who attend. So thank you once again for your participation for last week and, and for being ready to, to pray and ask God's direction even for, uh, for the upcoming senior camp. One, uh, one other thing coming up soon, the Sunday after senior camp, going to have a, a missionary to, uh, to our military, uh, Brother Kitchen. I met him uh, this past year during the year and saw him back in May again and asked him, or actually I asked him before May, but anyways, got to see him in person in May and asked him to come and present his ministry that Sunday, uh, that Sunday morning, July 25th. And, uh, you know, our military is spread all over the world, not just in the United States, and uh, they need somebody to care about them still spiritually when they're on the field. Uh, in serving our country in that way, uh, away from their home here in the States. And so I'm thankful that we have some missionaries that are going and, and uh, spending time and, and preaching the gospel and helping our military as they are serving in, uh, in foreign fields. And so Brother Kitchen will be with us this, uh, that Sunday, uh, July the 25th. <clears throat> Deacons and trustees, uh, by way of uh, reminder, have a uh, deacons and trustees meeting at 5.30 this evening in our normal uh, meeting place, and so uh, give you a heads up about that. Let's look at our memory verse for this week. Last week we, in our memory verse, uh, considered and hopefully meditated on the thought of <laughs> Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and uh, the importance of having God in our, in our nation. Uh, the verse this morning in Genesis chapter 18 here uh, is just a reminder but that by way of the nation of Israel coming from Abraham, of course, and God calling him out in that way that all the nations of the earth, no matter what name is with that nation, all the nations of the earth, can be blessed and have been blessed by, uh, by the nation of Israel. So let's uh, say this through this morning twice together. Genesis 18, 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Genesis 18, 18. Genesis 18, 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Genesis 18, 18. And I pray that you will take that verse and think about it, meditate on it this, uh, this week as you go about your day. Ushers, if you'll come right ahead, we'll receive the offering. Before we receive the offering, let's pray that God will take what is received and uh, bless it and it will be used for God's uh, 
God's work here. As we pray, Brother Dave Abbott, would you pray for us, please? Father, we thank you for the offering this morning. We uh, take pleasure in giving back to you a portion of what you have given to us. We pray that you would uh, receive it and use it for your will. So we thank you for that privilege. We love you this morning. We pray you bless us uh, the pastor as he preaches to us. We pray that our hearts might be open and the Holy Spirit might have his way with us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 that he will take care of us. If you would stand with me now, song number eight, song number eight. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. <clears throat> Let's sing to him this morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father.
Number 64 now. Song number 64. The wonder of it all that Jesus loves me. There's the wonder of sunset at evening. A wonder at sunrise I see. seated. This time, Miss Kristen is coming with the special this morning. Three crosses stood on Calvary's hill. It was crucifixion day. the only way a hammer and a soldier swing beat out redemption sound and from those hands that heal the sick his blood came streaming down and from precious veins the sin chains were broken by the blood. Those rusty nails shook the gates of hell and started a crimson flood. To one and all who would heed the call are waiting liberty. And the truth remains and 
will never change His blood still sets men free There is no curse on Golgotha Like there was when Jesus died The crowd has passed away that stood And watched him crucified Two thousand years have come and gone since that day on Calvary But the blood that flowed from God's own Son Is still setting sinners free And from precious veins The sinner's chains were broken by the blood Those rusty nails shook the gates of hell and stored in a crimson flood to one and all who would heed the call our waiting liberty and the truth remains and will never change his blood still sets men free the truth remains and will never change. His blood still sets men free. Thank you, Miss Kristen, for the uh, special and song. Aren't you thankful today that His blood does still set men free? And uh, if that was not the case, there would be uh, millions, actually billions, around the world today that would have no hope if His blood didn't still set men free. But, uh, but it does, and they have hope. And uh, we need to get the gospel out to the... Uh, Many around our world that does not know, that do not know Christ as their Savior. <clears throat> Appreciate the song this morning. Exodus chapter number 20. Exodus number 20. We finish today the last, the last of the Ten Commandments, <clears throat> as I said before. Didn't really set out to cover each commandment individually, but that's what uh, that's the way the Lord led, and and uh, that's what we have uh, tried to accomplish in our study here in in Exodus chapter twenty. <clears throat> so this morning we are on the last one. Commandment number 10, and uh, I believe and trust that God will use His Word to be a blessing to our hearts this morning. If you found your place, let's stand together, if you will. <clears throat> and as we have done in our reading, as we've preached on each commandment, let's begin here in verse number 1. It says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. 
Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Heavenly Father, we come to you again this morning asking your blessing and control upon the service. Pray that everything that's said and done would bring honor and glory to you, point others to you. Our desire is to be challenged and moved by your word today that we would be better Christians, better children of yours in our daily lives. So Lord, we pray. Bless in a, in a special way and I pray that hearts would be open to receive it. We pray all of these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> title of the message this morning is The Heart of the Matter in, Covet, in Coveting. The Heart of the Matter in Coveting. How many of you remember the good old Sears and Roebuck calendar? Uh, uh, catalog. Yeah, several hands. How many of you used to look at that and just as a as a wish book? Yeah, yeah, I did too. My uh, my grandma would always have the Sears catalog, uh, and I don't know. I don't remember. I was a kid, so I don't remember how often they used to come, but. Uh, she would always have the Sears catalog laying somewhere in the house and my brothers and I would always get it and we would flip through the socks section because that's what all kids want as a, as a gift, right? No, <laughs> not anywhere close. We would be in the toy section and, and we would look and we would take our crayons and circle what we wanted and not that it did any good, mind you, but we would circle what we wanted and Boy, they would have a, an army set and a, a, a battle set that you could have. And I always, boy, we enjoyed playing army men with our little army uh, men. And, and uh, so, boy, the bigger the set, the better. And we would look at those and, and we would wish for them. We would desire to have those, uh, those toys. And, and so that, and we did tell my mom and dad and, my grandma, that that's what we would like to have. We didn't always get them, but we did tell them. And so we would go through there and we would look and circle and, and, and dream about having this particular uh, item as, uh, as a birthday gift or Christmas or something. And uh, those years went by the wayside. And so I... I Set aside the Sears catalog and don't wish out of the Sears catalog anymore for those army men and those trucks and construction uh, things. I, I don't do that anymore. I've moved to the Bass Pro catalog. And uh, so I look at Bass Pro and Cabela's catalog. And I'll go through there and I'll look at uh, socks. And, uh, oh, okay, no, I still don't look at socks. I'll look at... Uh, Bows, arrows, uh, uh, fishing rods, fishing baits. I have. I am in a in a dire need of fishing baits, 
and if you believe that, then I'm teasing. I'm not serious. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't lack of having something to go fishing with, but it doesn't stop me from looking at the catalog and say, oh boy. And you, you ever dog ear the page so you come back to that one? Oh, I don't want to forget this, where this is. And so you dog ear the page and like, man, I've got to put two stars by that because that is a priority. I need those hunting boots or whatever it might be. I need that. Now you may not care at all about Bass Pro or Cabela's. It might be something else in your, uh, in your life to where you just, you just, your mind thinks about, boy, it would be neat to have and then whatever it is. If Brother Vic was here, he, he, would, he would be thinking about golf clubs. I got to have, uh, Brother Dave's here, and he, uh, you got to have this new golf club. It'll help me hit the ball 30 yards farther if I just had this club or this particular golf ball. It would go so much further, and I'd be so much better of a golfer if I had that. That wouldn't help my game, but uh, that's what some people think. I just have to have that. Some people... It's, uh, it's uh, sewing machines, or it's sergers, or it's this, or it's that. And you fill in the blank. We all have desires and a wish list, and, and if we're not careful, we can even get to coveting, can't we? Okay, I see this affects none of you all. Uh, I've already studied it and been convicted, so uh, we might be finished. No, we aren't not that fast. But it does. Co coveting affects all of us, doesn't it? Because we all want something. We all desire something. We're all, uh, we might think we're all in need of a particular thing. And you ever have a hard time distinguishing between a want and a need? You ever have that, that problem? Sometimes you think about something, you want something so bad, you think you need it, don't you? Oh, I need that. I've got to have it. Well, it's interesting, and, and probably mention it later in the, in the message, but the, the placement and the arrangement of these Ten Commandments that God has given to us in this passage is, it's uh, interesting the way that this Tenth Commandment here in verse number 17 is laid out for us in the fact he ends the Ten Commandments with the, with the command that thou shalt not covet. And then he goes into the list there. You know, each and every covenant, I mean, each and every uh, commandment that we've looked at is vital, isn't it? You can't have any other commandment to follow without the very first one where he says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And getting that, that relationship with our Heavenly Father, with our God. Having that relationship with Him, first and foremost in our life, just prepares the way for all these other commandments and the obedience for these other commandments, doesn't it? If we will keep God where He is supposed to be in our life, the other things in our life will take care of themselves. They'll follow suit, won't they? And we have, we've already looked at and, and considered the, uh, the first four commandments there and the importance of having God as our primary, uh, uh, as, our, as our own only uh, God because He's the only and true God that there is and that uh, He gave us the dangers of idolatry and, and although idolatry uh, pulls at us and has an allurement to, to us to where even we mentioned the fact and it goes hand in hand with the thought of, of coveting. You know, our hobbies can be gods in our lives, can't they? They can. And that goes hand in hand with coveting because we can covet other things outside of God. We can desire other things outside of God and remove Him from where He needs to be and put what we desire up there. And so coveting goes right hand in hand with idolatry and having it, having the wrong thing in the in the in the uh, the ruling seat in our heart. And so the first four commandments here, we we know that they relate to God. But then the the next commandments there that follow with dealing with man and that 
that uh, we should have the right relationship with parents and with uh, our neighbors and that we should not steal, we should not lie. And, and those are vitally important to, uh, to our lives. But here we get to, thou shalt not covet. There's several, there's quite a few definitions or ways in which we express the word covet. And some of them you may have heard of, or we might say them in a different way. The definition of coveting is desiring or wanting or craving something. To desire that which is another's is a, another definition. To wish for excessively. You ever wish for something excessively? No? Sure we have. Sure we have. It's to yearn to have or possess something. To crave or to be greedy or eager of acquisition. To have one's heart set on something. You know, when your heart is set on something, that's all your mind will think about, isn't it? Every time you turn around, your mind is thinking about that particular object, that particular person, whatever it might be. And that is another way that which we define or, or consider covet. One's heart being set on something. Consumed with the desire for something or someone. To dream of something. To have a hungering after or for a particular thing. This is a definition from Kentucky. To have a hankering for it. So that, that must have been a person from Kentucky who defined that. To have a hankering for something. What's that mean? You desire it. You covet it. Now not all coveting is bad. Say, Brother Brian, you just read the verse. It said, thou shalt not covet. And then he gave the list, didn't he? But covet is to desire. To, to want. I've heard many a preacher, and not just preachers, heard many a, a Christian say at one time or another, maybe going through certain issues in their life, and they will say this maybe to another Christian or, or friend or family member. They, they say, you know, I covet your prayers. There's nothing wrong with coveting somebody's prayers. It means you desire them. You, you want them to covet somebody's prayers. So we have to understand that the word covet doesn't mean that you are sinning when you covet somebody's prayer. That's not a sin. That's all right. You can covet the right thing. You desire it. And so when you think of it in that, uh, re, that thought process, we even find in Psalm 68 and verse number 16, the psalmist says, Why leap ye, ye high hills? This is the hill which God desireth to dwell in. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. And the psalmist is referencing here Mount Zion and uh, there in Jerusalem, and how that God even desires that hill. And we know that He will possess that hill one day, don't we? As we, uh, we know that uh, the Lord will rule and reign from, uh, from there. But coveting is, is all right if you're coveting the right thing. If you desire the right thing, you, you desire the right relationship with God, don't you? You desire that. You, you covet, you desire that, that walk with God. That time with Him, that time with Him in His, in His Word. But the references here mainly pertain to the fact of coveting the wrong things. Thou shalt not covet these items here. And, and what he is getting across here is, don't covet, don't desire things that belong to other people. When you desire something that belongs to someone else long enough or strong enough or act upon that desire of coveting what they have, what's that lead to? Stealing, doesn't it? Taking something that doesn't belong to you. Started with a, in your heart in coveting that particular item, whatever it might have been. And so when, when we see here God's 
giving this commandment to Moses for the children of Israel, we understand that the thought and the idea here is to covet something that belongs to someone else. That it's not your property, it's somebody else's. What might cause us to covet? You ever think about that? What causes me to covet? What causes me to desire what somebody else has? Probably I would say one factor might be that we're unsatisfied with what we do have. Wouldn't you say? To be unsatisfied with what we have. I always use the illustration of, a, of vehicles or that type of thing, but I've been driving down the road and look over next to me and see another vehicle that I think, <laughs> boy, I wished I had that. You ever have that thought? Yeah. Thought y'all were going to leave me hanging there. Uh, yeah, there you go, Brother Brian. Coveter. Wanting that guy's big... And I, and I didn't covet it last night, but I did see a very nice pickup truck. I was at the gas station. This, I was putting gas in one of the church vans. I sitting there and this guy pulls up and just trying to tempt me to covet. He pulls up in this full size. Now I'm not a big dually wheel in the, uh, on the trucks, but uh, it did, and I could live with it. And he had it on there, full size, eight foot bed on the back, four door cab. It was in the for you truck people. It was in the the 3500 range of trucks. It's this is the big one. Four-wheel drive, red. He was just fulfilling everything I was thinking about. It. As I sat there and was pumping gas, and I looked up and thought, man, the Lord's answering my prayer right here. This guy is going to see that I'm from church and that I'm a preacher of God's Word. And he's going to say, brother, have you been wanting a truck? And I'll say, yeah, that one. That, that one there. And it's okay if it has dual wheels in the back. I can live with that. We, we're good. We do. Sometimes it's easy to look at what we're driving or what we're wearing or what we have or, or that. I used to have a friend. <clears throat> Every time the new, the newest, the newest uh, Apple computer laptop came out, he had to have it. I mean, he, his could be just a few months old. And a new one come out, and he's like, boy, i got to have that. But you just got one. I know, but that one's even better. Why? Because we're, we're unsatisfied, aren't we? You ever been unsatisfied with what you have? Yeah. Sometimes it might be a house. The Lord has given you a perfectly good house that keeps you warm or cool or dry or out of the wind and weather, whatever. It meets your needs. And yet we can drive down the street and see a bigger house. More garage bays for everything you need. I don't think they will ever build a garage big enough for any man. I don't. It can have 72 bays and be five stories high. And you can have your own parking structure. And you will say, you know what? If I just had a little building out here to the side, I could put, and you could find 50 things to put in that building. You know I'm telling the truth. Why? Because we're not satisfied. Not satisfied. Sometimes we covet because maybe on the job or wherever it might be, we want a higher position. Not satisfied with this position, I want a higher position. Not satisfied with this particular level in the company, I want a higher level. Why? Because always wanting, always desiring. Boy, I wished I had their office. What are you doing? You're coveting. It's something that we as human beings, whether saved or unsaved, Coveting is something that's in our flesh to where we desire something that is not ours, but we want it for ours, don't we? 
The Lord knew. When He gives the Ten Commandments to the, to the children of Israel by way of Moses, he, is, he knows the heart of man and He knows that this is going to be an issue with everyone. Not just Moses. Not just Aaron. Aaron and Miriam will have a, have a problem with this right here. Coveting. Coveting Moses' position. They'll have an issue with that. But no, God knows that everyone has an issue with this coveting, wanting something that someone else has. And he says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. The idea here behind the word house is, yes, the structure, what they live in, whatever form that might take, it, they would covet someone else's house, but it can also uh, uh, mean and, and continue on to the fact of don't covet their family, don't covet their property, their possession, don't don't. don't uh, covet what they have as far as way of, of property matters uh, as well and don't covet their family. You know, through the years I've, I've known people to covet things like that. Covet family. You know, if you... If you're blessed with a godly family... Thank the Lord for that. Even this week, being there at junior camp, a lot of children a lot of children that would love to go home with you as opposed to go home to where they have to return to. You know, it's easy to covet somebody else's family. Be thankful for the family God has given you. To Brother Brian, my family, <laughs> it's, it's all in a mess. But may I tell you this? If you dig far enough down, all families have a mess somewhere. They do. It may be a different shape. It may be a different kind of mess, but all families have messes. Why? Because families are made up of people. People that, even though if they're saved, they still have an old flesh they battle, and they still have a sin nature, and they still deal with that. Families are similar in that way. But he says, don't covet. You see, you understand, he, he is making this specific. He's saying, don't covet your neighbors. And here we go with that word neighbor again. We talked about it last week. Who's my neighbor? Everybody. He doesn't mean talking to the children of Israel. He doesn't mean, okay, the person in the tent next to you. No, everybody. Don't, no, don't covet, don't desire, don't, don't have your heart set on your, your neighbor's house or his possessions and, and his family. Don't, and don't, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Well, we just covered that one a little earlier, didn't we, in the commandments? Thou shalt not commit adultery. You know what, you, what is hard to do sometimes? You can't see coveting. For the most part, you can't see coveting. Unless somebody acts upon it and you see that, oh, they have been coveting. Because you know where coveting takes place? Here. I can't look at any of you and say, you're coveting. I can't see that. Now you know if you go out here and you hold up a place and, and you steal from somebody in some way, we can, we can see that you're breaking that commandment or the adultery commandment or kill commandment or, 
or, or something like that. We can see those because they have an action involved in them that is open. But when you covet, it starts in here and that coveting we cannot see. But God can. He knows exactly when you have the wrong desires, the wrong attitude towards your neighbor's possessions. Thou shalt not covet thy uh, his manservant, maidservant, ox, ass. Don't covet any of those things. And then he, he finishes up and says, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. You know what the tendency in when they would write laws and, and that type of thing back in, in this time period, they would give examples and it would, it would be some examples for the whole. And they would, they would, in their mind, understand that these examples are saying to me, everything is off limits. In our society today, in our rules and laws, we have to spell out everything to the T, don't we? That's why if you go down and look at the laws, I guess at the courthouse, you'll find there are volumes, thousands of pages of laws and rules. Because if it's not exactly spelled out, we always say they got off on a loophole, don't we? It wasn't spelled out to the T. Well, God is spelling it out to the T by giving us examples. And He says... Don't covet these things, his house, his, his wife, his manservant, maidservant. Don't do it. And then let me sum it up. Nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Not a thing. You know where we get into trouble as a society? It's when the vast majority of people are covetous. Because then you have people who want to take your stuff, want to take my stuff. That goes into breaking other laws. And if they, if they want your stuff bad enough and you're not willing to give it up, it can lead into killing, the taking of a life. We mentioned, I believe, several weeks ago, the, the fact that in our own nation right now, the, the murder rate has skyrocketed here over the last year. Why? Because there's more lawlessness because of a sinful heart that desires, uh, uh, you know what, I want your stuff and I deserve your stuff and I'm going to take your stuff and conflict ensues and someone is killed. I think God knew what He was saying, didn't He? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's fill in the blank. Anything that is thy neighbor. Don't, don't do it because it will cause a deterioration in, in society and it will cause a, a, a ruin of society if you do not listen, if you don't uh, obey these commandments. But it all begins here. The first commandment, thou shalt not have uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me, gets us started off in the fact of what is the first and great commandment? I just told you, didn't I? Thou shalt not have any other god before God. And what about the second commandment? It's likened to the first. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You know what, if I love my neighbor as myself and I obey that command, that sums up that last six, that last six uh, commandments, doesn't it? Matter of fact, Jesus even says, upon these two commandments, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, body, with all your being, if you'll love God the way you should love Him. And then the second is likened to the first, love thy neighbor as thyself. Upon these two commandments hang all the prophets, don't they? Yeah. If we can 
hold on to those, if we can grasp those, we would be right in line with where we're supposed to be with it. Now, Brother Brian, we don't even need the other eight commandments here. If, if those two are, are the ones we, we need, those two summarize the others, but God spells them out for us so that we know how to live, how we're to interact with others. And he says... When he, when he sums it up with the, with the idea of coveting is in the heart, well, so is the first commandment that I shouldn't have any other God before the one true God. Where is that found? It's in the heart. If I can love God the way I should, it begins in the heart. If I love my neighbor as I should, it begins in the heart. So where do we need to where do we need to examine today? As we finish up these Ten Commandments here, as we as we come to the conclusion of, of the way that God has them here for us uh, in, in the list here, as we consider them, where should we start to see if we're in conformity to the Ten Commandments? Where should we begin? Say, well, Brother Brian, I uh, I have not done. Uh, I'm, I'm, I honor the Lord. I, I do what I'm supposed to. I'm not a murderer and I've never committed adultery and I, my uh, parents, I honor them. I, I'm doing these things, but let's check our heart. Let's look in our heart and see and ask God to examine us and say, God, where am I? Where am I today in my relationship to where I should be? Is my heart in the right place? Am I, am I coveting something that someone else uh, that belongs to someone else? Is there something in my heart that is desiring what they have and, and maybe I'm not even really focused on it? I've, I've done it so many times. I've, I've looked and coveted after what people have so many times that I don't even really think about it anymore. It's just a way of life. And this morning, we need to ask God, God, reveal that to me. Show it to me, Lord, if I'm coveting something that belongs to someone else, whatever it might be. Because coveting comes from that unthankful heart. Unsatisfied, yes, but unthankful. Because where does every good gift come from? From my Father above, doesn't it? And for me to, to desire something that belongs to someone else and what God has given them, then I'm coveting, I'm wanting what God has blessed them with and being unthankful for what He's given me. And if our children did that to us, what would we be? We'd be quite upset, wouldn't we? We'd think, well, you know what? You don't deserve anything that I give you. You can't be thankful for what I've given you then maybe I shouldn't give you anything else. You ever thought that? Give something to someone and they're like, oh, okay, oh, thanks. Probably appreciate that. And you know inside they're not really appreciative. They're just saying, no, oh, thanks. But let not that be our attitude towards our Heavenly Father who takes care of us and blesses us with everything that we have, our possessions, our family, our church. Let's have a heart of thanksgiving for what God has given us and not be looking at what He's blessed others with and desire at want what they have. You know, it's a miserable life. Have you ever wanted something that someone else has had so much that it consumed you and you couldn't enjoy what you did have? You ever been in that situation where you keep thinking of what you don't have compared to what you do have? It's a miserable life. Miserable living. And God says, don't covet. Be thankful for what you do have. Don't, don't go pursuing these 
these other things that are, that are out there that belong to other people, you know, there are some things that we should desire and covet with all of our hearts. I just wrote down a couple here this morning. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Do we, do we in our hearts hunger and thirst after righteousness? That's a good desire. That's a good uh, desire to have in our heart. Psalm 42, verse number 1 says, as, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. What's that mean? It means his heart is set upon God. He desires God. He wants God and his desires, he panteth after God. Ephesians chapter 4, we can look there and read and find that our desire, what should we should truly want, is that our life should follow the example of Christ. It's okay to desire that and long for it with all your heart. That's a good desire. Are we desiring that in our life? Dear Brother Brian, I, I, have, I don't have any issue or any trouble with any of these things in my, right, my life right now. I'm, I'm not coveting anything that anyone else has. And if that's the case, then excellent. Excellent. What a blessing for that to be the case. But there's an old nature living inside of you. There's a flesh that would love to rear its head and says, you know what, you don't have that. Don't you wish you had that? And the flesh can, can turn our mind, our hearts towards certain things that we should not have. Should be off limits to us. Maybe it belongs to someone else and that covetousness can come up inside of us in our hearts and we can be ruled by it. And God says, don't let that be the case. Guard yourself. Be mindful of it. Know that it's a possibility. Where do you stand today? Where's your heart? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart and love others as yourself. How's the condition of your heart? We've looked at Ten Commandments. Finishing now with the desire of the heart. Where is your heart? Let's bow our heads together. As Brother Andrew is coming to lead us in a song of invitation. There may be some here today that says, <clears throat> Brother Brian, I, you're talking about having that relationship with God. Having Him and having God in His rightful place in our lives and I don't even have a relationship with God. I've never trusted Christ as my Savior. If that's your case today, if that's your situation today, and you don't know Christ as your Savior, let me tell you, He loves you. And He gave His life for you to pay for your sins so that you wouldn't have to pay for your own. You wouldn't have to go to hell at death and suffer for eternity. He made a way of escape. He made a way of forgiveness of your sins. And if you don't know Christ as your Savior, may I invite you this morning to come. Trust Him. Place your faith in Jesus Christ as the only way in which your sins can be forgiven. He will save you.
No matter what you've done, no matter what sin you may have in your life, He will forgive you. He will save. Christians today, <clears throat> the Lord has shown you some areas in your life that you've been unsatisfied with what He's given you. Maybe He <clears throat> brought some things to mind that you have maybe been complaining about. Maybe complaining about something that He gave you as a blessing and maybe you don't see it that way. May I encourage you this morning, talk to your Heavenly Father about that. Repent of the unthankful heart because it can and it will lead to a covetous heart towards something else make it right with him this morning before you leave Heavenly Father we come to you once again still desiring that you will work in our hearts as a result of your word I pray that if there's anyone here this morning that you are dealing with their heart maybe you're convicting them I pray that they will make it right with you today before they leave Pray that you'll work in your invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together, if you will. <clears throat> Song number 275, Just As I Am, as we sing. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bidst me come to thee O Lamb of God I come I come just as I am trying to do with the nation of Israel in this passage he's he's trying to set the trying to set the table for the rest of their journey and not just the rest of their journey to the promised land but the rest of their everyday living in their life in the promised land because they were going to need these commandments so that they can have the right relationship with Him and the right relationship with others if they were going to be obedient to Him. The same holds true for us. Same thing. If we're going to be in, live in obedience to God, we're going to have to take these same principles. Having God where He is supposed to be in our life 
so that we can have our relationship with others be where it is supposed to be in our life. Not just for Sundays, but for every day. Every day we live, we interact with these commandments. Because every day we live, we interact with others. And we should be interacting with God, our Heavenly Father. Looks like an easy recipe for living right, doesn't it? Looks like an easy thing to follow. I can do that. And yet, it's so easy to not have our heart right with God and not have our heart right with others. So easy to not be where we're supposed to. And yet, we think, well, anybody can do that. And we try to do it on our own strength. But we need the help of God help the Holy Spirit who indwells us as believers to follow any of these as we should. So may I encourage you this uh, the rest of this day and this week as you live your life think about am I pleasing God and if I'm pleasing God then I will be handling these situations correct as well. And thank you Miss Kristen and Miss Patty and we will we will be living in harmony with God and others, and uh, may that be our desire in our uh, excuse me in our obedience to uh, to God. Great is thy faithfulness, Bill, for the closing course. All right, all right. We'll have a word of prayer, and uh, then. Uh, seeing our closing chorus this uh, this morning. Brother Jerry Pillow, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Yes, Lord, please. Amen. Amen. Chorus of great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. God bless you. You are dismissed. Choir practice at 530 for those that are in choir.